Uh, ready? Yep. What's up everyone? This is Don from Caraville. Today we're gonna do a little rig rundown, show you our in-ear monitoring live rack system that we built and use. Yeah, just gonna go over the parts and pieces going in here, show you some of the cabling in the back, and uh, I got Ellis here, guitar player. What's up? Uh, and he's gonna go through some of the guitar stuff and whatever he wants to talk about on it. So this is it. We're gonna show you what it what it does and how it all works together. How did this whole unit start? How did how did this whole rack start? The whole rack started. As everybody knows, it doesn't matter what venue you're at, you cannot hear anything out of the four widgets. It just doesn't work. They don't work. They can turn it up as loud as they want. It does not work. So we said, okay, time to get one of these. I will tell you, if you decide to build one of these, it'll take your live performances to a new level. You can hear everything so much better, which helps you perform better than what you hear once you're singing and playing and whatnot. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I remember. You, you the, can get it, Frank. Yeah. You know? There when, he is. Yep. Hey, what's up? I remember that we were running tracks off of a yeah, tiny yes. little interface and a DI box. And when this really started was when I went to Guitar Center one day and they had a sale on uh, Sure products. And I was just, I was not seriously looking into it at the moment, but I was, I asked the uh, salesperson, I was like, hey, uh, does that Sure discount apply to the uh, transmitters? He said, yeah, yeah, man, they're on, yeah. They're on sale. I called Dalton and said, man, these, these inner monitor things, they're on sale today. I'm gonna buy one and there's only one other one. So you better, you better get up here. And so we got two of these and that was the start of this whole thing. And then after that, we matriculated the rest of this <laughs> over the course of a few months. Uh, and we completed it uh, January 2023. This year. Yes. This year. No regrets. Yeah. Best thing this man's ever done. Yeah. It, it's great. Yes. So, the case. It's a 12 view shock mounted rack case. I got it on Marketplace for 120 bucks. <laughs> it works perfect. Nothing wrong with it. If you're looking to build one of these, I highly recommend getting a shop case. If you're on the road and stuff, or you're dragging around venues and dropping it, dropping it out of vans and stuff, the uh, foam padding around here will protect all the gear inside. Uh, depending on your needs, you might need a bigger rack, or a smaller one. Uh, my other band, we have an 18 unit. This band here, 12 unit is all we need. We're a lot simpler, which I like simplicity because it works. All right, so starting at the top, this is a Furman M8DX uh, power conditioner. Basically all this is is an overhyped, overpriced power strip. <laughs> And it's rack mountable. That's all. I mean, that's what it is. You can get them. You can get the cheaper model where it doesn't have all these gadgets and stuff. It literally is just a power strip. I was like, if I want to do it, I want to get what I want. So the M8 DX. Uh, basically, the whole difference is it has a voltage meter on the front. It's supposed to have 120 volts. So I mean, you can go to your dive bars and stuff and get voltage spikes and stuff like that. It'll let you know if you have bad power. And then it also has these pull-out lights that light up the front of the rack. Not very good when it's already a lit place, but in yeah. the dark, it does light up the whole front. Uh, this is absolutely necessary. Don't use a power strip because these, if you have a voltage spike or any kind of pr power problems, it'll blow up everything inside this rack. <laughs> well, so if you have that problem, this will blow up before any of the rest of your stuff does, which is what you want. Yeah. It's easier to replace a $150 part than several thousand dollars worth of gear. Yeah. We talked earlier about the transmitters, the Shure, <coughs> uh, PSM 300, me and Dalton have those two, and we run stereo mixes from those. Yeah, those transmitters work pretty good. I'm yep. using the standard earbuds that it comes with, Dalton is using they're on Amazon, they're really popular, the KZ AS10s, they're like 60 bucks, they're five drivers, they're really good. But yeah, PSM 300 Sure, they work very well. If you're going to build one, get Sure or Sennheiser for the in-ear monitors. They have a very good reputation, they're known for working well and for being reliable. They're very simple to use, they look good too, Yeah. And they look really sweet sitting on there. But like you said, we're running, everybody in the band runs stereo mixes. Most bands run mono because it's a lot cheaper because you can run four people on just two of these instead of having to get four. If you're running stereo, each member has to have their own in-ear monitor system. Yeah. So if you can do with mono, it's a lot cheaper. I'm telling you though, if you go with stereo, you will not run mono again. Matter of fact, the band I just joined, they run all mono 
makes this. And when I joined, I said, I'm running stereo. They said, okay, whatever. So they set me up stereo because I do not want to run a mono. It sucks. <laughs> uh, so yeah, highly recommend these. Either PSN 300 or the uh, Sennheiser, the G4. We got Will's inner monitor transmitter. It's a Galaxy Audio. Um, yeah, the difference between these two, this one's a lot cheaper. How much is it? 220 bucks. So these retail 849. Each member bought their own in-ear monitor system. That was the rule, like, okay, you know, everybody buy their own in-ear. Yeah. I don't care what you get. If it works well for you, great. I don't care what you get, but. So he got the AS950 Galaxy Audio, 220 bucks, I mean, what, what it was in Sweetwater. This thing works just as good as these, not gonna lie to you. These have a lot more features. If you get to a venue where there's a lot of wireless going on, you'll have a much better chance on finding a clean channel on the shares because they have a wider bandwidth. They have an auto scan feature, right? Auto scan. This yeah. one here, you just have to click through here. It has channels one through 16. You just gotta click through, match the channel on here to the channel on your uh, receiver. But it does work. He has not had any problems with it so far. He actually runs on one channel and it does not change. He runs on channel 16, it has not had a problem for 220 bucks. It's a steal. If, you, if you're on a budget, I guess I should say, you can't afford a Shure Sennheiser, uh, I can't, I can recommend these. They work, they work well. Very simple, just a power button, your channel button, that's about it. There's the input meter on the front. A little headphone jack, I don't know why you would want that. 220 bucks, Sweetwater. If you're on a budget, grab you a Galaxy. So this is like the newest addition to the rack. Do I need this? No, but I wanted it. <laughs> so I wasted the money and bought it. <laughs> this is a Sennheiser EW100 uh, G4 wireless microphone system. It's got the 935 capsule on it. The mic I was using before was a Sennheiser 935 wired. So I just wanted a wireless version of it. That's what I got. Um, I actually got this refurbished on reverb from Alto Music in New York. It's like 650 bucks, normally like $900 and it's like brand new. It works great. These are the two antennas. Um, I'll show you where the in-ear monitor antenna is in a second once we get to the back of the rack, but two wireless microphone antennas are on the front. The Sennheiser unit is a little more sophisticated than the Shure. It has a little bit of wider bandwidth, but it sounds great and it works. It does what it's supposed to. Uh, it's an analog wireless. It's not digital, so no latency or anything. When you say something, it goes straight there without any latency. It's analog. Digital, you might have a little tiny bit of latency. And we have the front panel of the mixer we're using. Behringer XR18 mixer. This was the very first piece of equipment we bought because they were very hard to find last year. Very, very difficult. And I just happened to get on Sweetwater and it was in stock and I immediately bought it because I knew <laughs> we weren't gonna be able to find another one. Yeah. The most popular mixer to run on these is the X32 rack. I don't have any experience with it, but personal opinion, without any experience on the X32, I don't really understand the need for the extra thousand dollars. This thing works perfect. It has all your EQs and compressors and gates and everything in it. We run four stereo mixes through it. It's got 16 inputs. We're only running 11 or 12 inputs, not even that. No, like 10 inputs, not yeah. 10 inputs. If you do do this, I do recommend, as you can see, the ears actually flip backwards. All your connections and everything are inside the rack. A lot of the bands that have the XR18, they have it where it's facing out and it's just a mess of cables on the front. You flip the ears backwards, everything's nice and neat and you got a clean looking rack on the front. This was $6.99, Sweetwater. This got straight Sweetwater brand new. I think the price went up since then. Highly recommend the XR18. It's like perfect for in-ear monitor. I don't know about running live sound with it. In-ear monitor rack, it's like the perfect yeah. little mixer for sure. Yeah. You can run it off your phone with an app. We opted to not do that. We actually, I'll show you on the Mac here in a little bit, MacBook Pro. Uh, we run it with an Ethernet cable. We have the mixer on the MacBook. The Wi-Fi that's built in on these digital mixers is complete garbage. <laughs> they are, yeah. they're, they're junk. <laughs> that do not ever rely on that. Everybody will tell you that. Do not rely on the built-in Wi-Fi on these, they're junk. You just absolutely have to have your phone, your phone app to do it wirelessly, put a router. Your own yeah, router, a real router. router. Yeah, put a router in there. We don't really see the need to do that because once we have a mix set up, you usually don't have to touch it. Yeah, XR18, go get it. Next piece is the Art S8. XLR splitter. This is the uh, probably the most important piece of gear in this rack, believe it or not. If you don't have one of these, you ain't running in any rack. Basically all it is, we have all of our inputs on the front, each is labeled. So, you know, we got vocal guitar, vocal guitar, vocal bass, kick, etc. All your inputs go into here and uh, on the back, which we'll show you in a little bit. Each input has two outputs. Uh, one output goes to the mixer which goes to the inner monitor systems. And then the other output is on a 30 foot XLR fan to fan snake that we get in front of house. They plug it into their stage box and they get the signal. 
the art is a very very good splitter it's one of the pieces in your one of the pieces of gear in your right that you don't think about it's just there and it just does its job it's not powered or anything you literally just plug in and it's works it's really yeah. clean my other band we have the seismic audio split it works good it works good too i think the art is a little more quality you do pay for it of yeah. course a little bit more expensive very important piece of gear go get you an art that's it splitter depending on how many inputs your band has you might need two we got away with one <laughs> and we fill up the whole thing but that's all we need and then next we have the scarlet 18 i20 mm -hmm. it's the audio interface that we're running all of the tracks, all of the clicks from, all of the MIDI from. Basically, it's uh, playing audio tracks for us, running MIDI to our guitar effects boxes. Gen 2, 18, 9, 20. Got a brand new from Focus Right. 350 bucks, I think. Yeah, from what he said. It just runs our, we have stereo, live tracks, clip track. We'll get to it in a little bit, but we run guitar modelers. And this also runs the MIDI that changes all of our effects and amps and everything on the modelers for us. So he has a pedal board. I don't really have one. It's literally just, yeah. it's all in here. All of our changes, all of our big ones are mm -hmm. on those, are coming from this into the next drawer. And we run a Logic Pro X on the Mac. That's what goes to the focus, right? That's what the 18 i 20 does. Is it necessary? You can probably get away with a little small focus right, but the rack mount version of it is just a lot neater. And you have so many inputs and outputs, so if we ever needed them for whatever reason, we got them. The next two slots, we'll uh, have to get up close on those, but get a Gator 2U rack drawer. They're a drawer, they work. They're very, very heavy. Like, I think they're 22 pounds a piece. That is most of the weight in this rack. We got two of them, they're like 150 bucks, a guitar center or whatever. The biggest complaint on these are these <laughs> latches. They break. They are, matter of fact, I had to replace this one right before we started this video because it was broke. I, I have like four or five spares sitting in our little stage bag over there. They are just complete junk. But the drawers themselves are very nice and they open nice and smoothly. But the latches, just have some on hand and you'll be okay. This drawer has all of our guitar equipment in it, and this is just a storage drawer. We keep our uh, inner monitor packs, our in ears, stuff like that. And that's all that is. Real quick, we're gonna go to the back of the rack real quick because there's one more piece of gear back there that we'll show you. We'll get into one more detail. So we're at the back of the rack now. There is one more piece of gear that's hidden back here. Uh, this is a Sure PA411 Antenna Miner. This is uh, what runs the wireless antennas for our in-ears. Instead of having an individual antenna for each transmitter, we got it all combined down onto one unit. When you use one of these, you usually use a paddle antenna. Usually get a coax cable, run it to like a sure paddle antenna and set it somewhere on stage. If we get to a bigger stage someday, <laughs> we will do that. But for now, I just got the sure. It's the UA8 antenna. Don't have a problem with it, it works. So the combiner, it combines all the antenna signals for um, the IEMs and it also powers all the units. It saves some space on the um, power conditioner back there. It works well. I don't even know it's there honestly. Just This is like one of the pieces you only to look at. It's just there. There to be there. And then right here, got a Radial Pro AV2 DI box. This is what runs our tracks. Uh, we have a separate snake, XLR snake, that runs our tracks so that we plug in here and get to the front of the house. That's actually Ellis's. He donated it to the, to the rack here. And it works. Radial is like top of the line DI boxes. Everybody knows they work very well. They're quiet. And then here's your snake. This is what goes to the front of the house. It's a 30 foot XLR snake. Uh, it's an elite core. I think it's the PEX 830. And uh, yeah, it works well. There, It's knockoff Nutrix connectors. I don't really care. The whole point of this is to get the sound to the front of the house. And that's what it does. I'm not going over all the cabling and everything, but here's what it looks like in the back. Got a Hosa, it's like a two foot snake. This is what goes from the split to the uh, the mixer. It goes to our in-ear monitors. Uh, this is actually very nice cable management considering everything that's going on in here. <laughs> so if anybody needs some ideas on how to rig one of these up, this will maybe give you a little, little guidance. All right, now the Ellis's drawer. <laughs> okay, now we're at the drawers. This is the first one. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. So Go ahead, Ellis. in here we have the Line 6 HX stomps. Me and Dalton run these for our guitar signals. 
they're going straight into the splitter up here where it says guitar, D guitar, Dalton guitar, Ellis guitar. And we just use these little, they're um, stereo cables. TRS to XLR? Yeah, TRS to XLR. Mm -hmm. We take it from the mono output of the HX stomp into the microphone input. And that's how we get guitar signals. My main is just a dual rectifier. It's on a Marshall 1960 cab. I don't really use that one. It's a JCM 800. Um, that one's like a, what, a dual. Oh, right? the clean one is the adult, is the twin reverb. Twin reverb. Yeah, I really only use, uh, there we go, Dalton Clean and Dalton Mesa. <laughs> That's all that I really use. He's a little more sophisticated over yeah. there. Uh, I have two kind of settings. I have a 5150 setting. This one has snapshots for rhythm tones and lead tones that I use, a rhythm, a lead. And there's a, a patch that I use on a particular part of a song where I'm doing some tapping and there's phaser on it. So it's just a little bit louder than the other two. And then after that, I have a just lead setting where some of the other songs where I have like bigger delays and reverb and then there's a chorus on there for one song. And then after that, I have another group. I haven't labeled this one yet, but um, as rhythm lead and, but the first snapshot is rhythm. It's a SLO, the Soldano 100 on a Mesa Boogie cabinet. The last one was 5150 on a Mesa Boogie cabinet. I'm using the amp and cab so I can also have a whammy in here. I rarely use this. I have a gate on uh, my guitar input. I have a graphic EQ for the leads, so it's not as muddy. And then there's a course in there. EQ again, parametric. I low shell, or I low cut and I high cut all the distorted guitar settings. I think also the clean, but distorted guitar, you kind of have to have that in there so it's not killing you with high end and it's not like really muddy and subby. You don't need that. I have the dynamic ambience that just makes it feel like it's more of a real amp in a room. And then the delay comes on for two of these settings here. And then after that, there's some extra settings. There's the just lead, another one. There's uh, some uh, settings for particular songs where I just wanted a particular effect. I kind of do that with some of these. This one has the, the solo setting I use for one of our songs and I just switch to it. I try to use the snapshots wherever I can. This one's got a harmonizer on it. So I switched that one when we do the solo in this particular song. There are some other ones. I don't know if I use this setting. I think I do, uh, but there's some other ones for some covers that we do. It's pretty cool. Me and Dalton use the MIDI. I have a MIDI in and Dalton has a MIDI out from the side here and a MIDI in. He receives it from the Focusrite interface and it goes out uh, to mine and we both get our MIDI messages from there. This is the uh, Strymon Ojai. This saves us another <laughs> in, it saves us the whole power conditioner. Yeah. For any of you that own one of these helices, you know the power supply that comes with these is an absolute joke. Yeah, it's huge. It's like this <laughs> big. So if you wanted to plug it in, you'd have to get like, a, I don't know, uh, an extension a cable. extension cable. Yeah. And bring it out front. Yeah, so we avoided that. Ellis went out of his way and got us a power supply. We, uh, yeah, the Strymon Ojai. Yeah. Strymon Ojai power supply that is designed that has enough amperage to run the helix because these suck a pretty good amount of power. And all you got to do is just get the, the Voodoo Lab, the, the amperage combiner is what it is. Honestly, I forgot that was there, but <laughs> it yeah. just sits back there and it just does its job. It just works. The MIDI, focus right into mine, out of mine, Ellis. And then uh, this is also, I plug my mic in, XLR comes out of the receiver and I just run it up into the drawer and there it is and we just plug her in that's how that works just keep it neat that is what's nice about the gator drawers they have the portholes on the back where you can run cabling through them there's our guitars and then the most boring part of it is just our storage drawer have all our in-ears in here wireless packs i'll go and show you one of the sure packs here you go this is the receiver for sure i am uh, we got everything labeled very simple to use. So you just get the venue, hit scan on here. Okay, it says 
group one channel two is the cleanest channel so we're gonna bring it down here hit sync on the transmitter and you're ready to go you plug your ears in and you start playing and then this is the galaxy receiver very simple it's got a volume knob and a power knob on top two AA batteries and like i said there's no sync feature on these or anything you just match the number on your receiver with your transmitter and you'll get signal here's what it's a little bit up close so everybody can see, got everything labeled. The splitter's labeled very nicely. Uh, that's just Dalton vocal, Dalton guitar, Ellis guitar, Ellis vocal, etc. The drummer plugs his trash mic into the split, but obviously that doesn't go out to the front of the house. It just, I don't know, we had an open channel. So we were like, okay, just plug it in there, keep it neat. <laughs> and then the brain of the operation is a 2012 MacBook Pro. <laughs> so far it hasn't screwed us over. We're about to, uh, upgrade this thing though because it is getting a little old <laughs> and technology does fail sometimes yeah so yeah there's logic it's just a little glimpse of a setup got our tracks click track and our midi messages for the guitars and then here's your mixer this is where we uh, control the level and all of our ears so just a few more things to show you this is how we run our guitars wirelessly without actually having a wireless rack mounted guitar system or whatever. That's how I run mine. Ellis is similar. He just has a little bit bigger board. Line 6 G30, Boss, Chromatic Tuner, TU3. And you just simply run a quarter inch cable out of there, into the drawer, into the input on this. And me and him both run these. <coughs> Don't have any problems. Uh, the bass player runs like a Boss wireless. Again, no problems. Yeah. As long as you don't have more than like three of these, Three of the 2.4 wireless on stage, you'll be fine. It's once you start getting six plus on stage, that's when you're gonna start having problems. Everything else is not run on 2.4. If all this ran on 2.4, there'd be no way this would work. You would get nothing. Yeah. Very <laughs> interference. No way out. Um, There's no way out. <laughs> hey. It, it's the same concept. He has this on his yeah. board and our uh, packs. As everybody knows, that knows the G30. The transmitters on these are an absolute joke. They are junk. They're built very poorly. So put them in a pouch and you'll never have a problem with it. They work great. And then there's the uh, transmitter for the mic. It's got the 935 capsule on it. Yep, Sennheiser G4. It works well, it's really light. I much prefer Sennheiser over Sure, but Sure happened to be on sale. So that's what we got. <laughs> uh, at least for microphones. I like the Sennheiser microphones a lot more. Like even like the, I like the, 609 mic more than the 57. I just think it sounds better personally. Yeah, I'm using the 57. He, he's a so. sure man. They, yeah. they all do the same thing. That's what I have. <laughs> <laughs> right. And if you want to, you can go get some stencils and some spray paint and put your band name on the rack lid. That was probably the funnest part about this project, honestly, was painting that on there. I thought it looked pretty cool. So that's it. If anybody has any questions, we're on Instagram and all that. Feel free to ask. More than happy to get some guidance on wiring these things up and building one. They're a great investment. Yeah, it's and, amazing. Uh, yep, so that's gonna be it for today. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, watching, for watching, for sure. <laughs> Check us out on Spotify, all of our new music, our music videos and everything. And uh, we'll see y'all later. Thank you so much.